I, she just looks so awkward and like kind of menacing hanging out right here. <laughs> this is Mochi. She is gonna be keeping me company today because her, her home is on the couch. <laughs> if you hear any snores, that would be Faith who is sleeping right here. Couch just has a full house. <laughs> hey y'all, my name is Nat. I hope you're having a terrific day today. And for this video, we are gonna be looking at my stats for the mid-year. All right, so before we get to anything bookish, make sure to hit like and subscribe down below, as well as tell me in the comments if you keep track, what genre have you read the most from so far? For today's video, I thought it'd just be nice to like relax. I got my laptop, I'm hanging out on the couch. Like I said, I got my Squishmallow, I got my pupper, and I'm ready to walk through my reading stats with y'all. I always mess up who I got my spreadsheets from, so I made sure to pull it up this time. I use a book tracker spreadsheet that was originally created by Allie at Hardback Hoarder, parsed it down to what I cared about the most a few years ago, and then I just keep making a copy of it every new year because I like the layout of it, I know it very well now, and it keeps track of what I want it to. <laughs> However, within Ali's spreadsheet, I actually took a portion from G at Book Roast's Caw Pile spreadsheet and inserted it into Ali's. That'll make a little bit more sense whenever I start sharing my screen and you can actually see what I'm saying. I keep track of simple stuff, title, author, publisher, pages read, or if I listen to it via audio, hours listened, then you can see where I put in the Caw Pile. So I have characters, atmosphere, writing, plot, intrigue, logic, enjoyment, and then of these, I get a rough estimate. And then from there, I will give it an actual rating. All right, so I actually moved over to the graph page. For my totals so far this year, I have read 26,321 pages. Isn't that insane? That number does include converting audiobook hours to pages, but in regard to audiobook hours, I've listened to nearly 400 hours, which is crazy. I have read 74 books so far, but unfortunately I have DNF'd 11. My goal for the year is 130, so I am on track. In regard to how many books I read each month, it looks like my average is about 12 books a month. Obviously, my most successful reading month was in May when I read 18 books. That is freaking fantastic. I do think Galactathon probably played into that number. And then in June, I only read seven books. Not the end of the world. <laughs> I, I think part of why this number is on the lower side is because I did read a, a few books that were on the longer side in June. My page count was definitely still comparable, but my book count wasn't. As for the format of the books I am reading, uh, 26 of the books I've read so far this year are audio. I have read seven ebooks, which isn't really surprising. That tends to be my least read format. I just don't like reading on my phone and it's very rare I ever read on my iPad anymore. I have read 25 books physically and and then I've read 16 books in some mix form, either with audio and ebook or audio and physical. As for the audience of those books, 47 books I've read so far have been in the adult category. Uh, zero children, one middle grade, which I actually marked myself because it is technically marketed toward young adults, but personally, I think the writing on it was much more comparable to middle grade stories. I have read 13 new adult and 13 YA books. Wow, that's... Uh, so far, of the 74 books I have read this year, 24 of them fall into the own voices category. This usually is something I will mark based on uh, the author's race, ethnicity, sexuality, disability, something in that regard that they are writing about in the story and whether or not it is similar to their own experience. That's when I will mark it as own voices. And then for where where I read my books from, I have borrowed two books. I believe those were Star Wars ones I got from my brother. Three of my book of the months, I have bought and turned right around to read five books. I've gifted 14 books. That's not right. I read 14 books which were gifted to me. And then I have read 42 books from my library. Not particularly surprising. I do adore my library. I go there nearly every week. 14 books came from my own shelf. One book was from Scribd slash Everand, although I've since canceled my subscription to that just because I wasn't using it enough. I've received three books from publisher. One is listed as other. I don't remember what that was. I'm gonna imagine it was like a story online or something. 
maybe. I also have this fun little graph down here that this is a new one I started tracking. I used to mark the publishing dates of my book in prior spreadsheets, but this year I realized I don't really care about the full date. I only care about the year and it's easier to make a graph if I just track the year. So I have this to see when are most of the books I'm reading coming out. Most of the stuff I do read is on the newer side, so that's not super shocking. I've read 15 books that came out this year, 10 from 2023, another 10 from 2022, 14 in 2021, five in 2020. As for my genres, this is always one of my favorite graphs to look at. I love seeing how diversified it is. I always have tried to make a point of reading books from different genres. I do have my preferred genres that I stick to a lot and those tend to be the majority of the pie. But again, I really like seeing one that's very diversified. I've read one romanticy this year, which is new to my genre table. I read one contemporary, 16 fantasies. That is a genre that tends to overtake the chart a lot. One graphic novel, one historical, five horror, which is a genre I want to work on. Then four mystery, two nonfiction, which is shockingly low. I have been so good about reading one nonfiction book a month in prior years, and I've really fallen off that this year. I've been trying to get back on top of it, but it hasn't happened. <laughs> I've read 14 romance and 16 sci-fi, which is competing with fantasy for the top number. That's not really shocking since I'm reading two Star Wars books a month, a lot right there. Two thrillers and then 11 manga. I'm hoping manga will also really be a contender for one of my top genres this year as, as I'm in the middle of two manga series that I'm really working to complete. Josh just bought the start of a different manga series that we're both wanting to read the other day. So I might be a third one I'll be in the middle of. We'll see. But yes, this is a wonderfully diverse pie and looking at it makes me happy. As does looking at my star rating chart. I mentioned I've already DNF'd 11 books this year. That's not awful, but I'd rather spend my time on books I'm actually enjoying. I have had one two star. Unfortunately, I've had four 2.5 stars. I've had nine three stars, 12 3.5, 18 four stars, 19 4.5 stars, and 11 five stars. Okay, now let's look at the author stats that I keep track of. So I've read from 61 authors who are cisgender, I've read from five authors who are gender fluid, one author who is gender queer, seven who fall under the transgender umbrella. Then for race, this one also makes me very happy. I've talked about in prior years, I've really been working to try and make this 50-50 between Caucasian authors and authors of other ethnicities and races. And I am doing that right now and I love it. I read from 11 authors who are black so far, 15 who are Asian, two who are indigenous, three who are Latin, one author that was mixed, one author that was Pacific Islander, 36 white authors, and then five from an author whose race I could not find. Lastly is this graph that looks at the publisher of the books I'm reading. I like to keep track of this one just to see like when I'm requesting art, as well as how often am I reading from authors who are under indie publishers. My winner is 20 from Penguin. I don't keep track of all of the little publishing houses. I just keep track of the big name house. Second after that is 11 at HarperCollins and then 10 at McMillan. And then I've got a few different indies throughout here. Disney is definitely gonna be cashing up, especially the further into the uh, Star Wars universe I get. And as I get into some of the newer novels, then I've got my library books tracker, which is really satisfying, particularly because it allows me to see how much money have I saved by using my library. And so far this year, I've read 88% of the books I have checked out and I have saved $637.06. This is great. Support your local library. They deserve it. Then I have my series tracker, which um, I will be doing a little bit of a deep dive into in November probably because that's when I do my series of series. So far this year, I have finished or DNF'd 14 series. fan freaking tastic because I've been doing my best to stay on top of these babies this year, especially with the Star Wars one, which is gonna be like such a long series to look at. Apart from those, I have started eight other series, but thankfully I've been, like I said, staying on top of these, which is great. And then lastly is this ant chart that I keep track of, which showcases to me how long it takes me to read a book. 
So that's it for my stats when it comes to my book tracker. But while I'm talking to you guys, I thought it would also be cool to look at um, some of the little goals I've been keeping track for myself, namely my 2024 TBR. 10 books that I picked myself and then 12 that were recommendations from friends. I'll put a link to my original TBR in the cards up above. I have a little graphic that helps me keep track and of my 10 books for 2024, I've already read nine of these and I love it. So satisfying. The only book I have left is Such Sharp Teeth by Rachel Harrison, which I do own and I am planning to get to. It's just a cozy horror book, so I think it'll be a little bit more in season, I suppose, if I were to read it in fall time. That's kind of why I haven't minded putting it off a little bit. As for my 12 wrecks by 12 friends, this one I'm not doing as hot on. I read four books from this list so far. I am planning to read two of these in July, hopefully. As for Serpent in the Wings of Night, my friend Ali is actually reading and annotating that for me, so I'm gonna hold off on it until I get the copy from her because I think that'll just add to my reading experience. The manga that Brie recommended me, Hokumi and Mikochi, I've had a really hard time finding this thing anywhere. <sighs> That's gonna be one I'm probably gonna have to hunt down. And Jan also picked for me Fear the Flames by Olivia Rose Darling, which at the time I think had only been independently published, but is actually going to be traditionally published. And I think coming out in like August or September. So I probably won't be reading that one until it comes out or more specifically until my library gets a copy probably. And then the last one I wanted to look at with you guys because it has already changed so much from when I filmed my TBR, my Reddit fantasy 2024 bingo card. <laughs> Yes, I have until end of March next year to complete this, but I am already doing phenomenally at this list. However, as I said, a lot of it has already changed. <laughs> For example, at the start, first in a series, I realized that Charlie and Ahara's Big Bad Wolf series was five books long and yet I was going to count it for the entitled animals. That was an obvious one to switch to complete the hard mode. The next three on that row, however, did stay to what I planned out on my TBR. For entitled animals, Dragon Fruit by Michaela Lucier would work for the hard mode. Prologue and epilogue, uh, that one got changed to the Fallen Star by Claudia Gray, which works for hard mode having both a prologue and an epilogue. I ended up using The Honey Witch by Sydney J. Shields for the romanticy prompt. I, I think it was an option I had listed for small town and while yeah they, they kind of live in a small town they stay in a small town but then they also go to a city and it's really not as relevant to the story or like the vibes or anything so i didn't feel like it was a good pick the next one down um i am still planning to read an education of malice for Dark Academia, it just unfortunately did not happen in June like I was hoping. Multi-POV, unsurprisingly, I went with the Star Wars book, which I do think I had guessed would happen. I stayed with Soul Let Them Burn for published in 2024, but I did change a character with a disability. As one of us knows by Alyssa Cole, did have a main character who suffered from dissociative identity disorder. K.A. Applegate's Animorphs got picked because of Galactathon. For the Orcs, Trolls, and Goblins, oh my, I now own Orc the Wild Side by Tom Holt, and that will hopefully be fulfilling this one. Shocking for space opera, I went with a Star Wars novel, I know. I stuck with She Who Became the Sun for survival, and also Extraordinaries for superheroes, which was my replaced prompt. Reference materials did change as I ended up reading Mirrored Heavens by Rebecca Roanhorse and realizing there was a character list and two separate maps, so that would work for the hard mode of reference materials here. And then finally for the book club or read-along prompt, literally realized after filming that video that it had to be a book that was a book club pick for one of the book clubs under the fantasy Reddit page. I didn't say that in my TBR, it totally slipped my mind. But when looking back at those lists, luckily I realized that A Strange and Stubborn Endurance by Foz Meadows would work and seeing as how that was on my 12 Rex by 12 Vamps, perfect. So yeah, we are doing really hot on this one. All right, and um, on that note, I think that is it for today, y'all. Thank you so much for coming to my channel. I really appreciate it. Make sure to hit like and subscribe down below. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, leave me a graph emoji in the comments. I have all my socials as well as a few ways you can support me linked in the description. I come out with videos on Monday and Friday, but until then, I hope you continue to have a terrific day. Love you, bye!